So I cannot wait for you to experience it with us. It's an amazing journey. And in the Six Day War in 1967, uh, uh, Israel was able to recapture it and had control of it. But that one part of the old city, you had the Temple Mount there that was given back to Jordan, no, is, is no, that correct? No, no. Jordan uh, had control upon the Temple Mount as part of uh, uh, their conquest of uh, certain parts of Palestine, uh, British Palestine, that they conquered as a result of the Israel's War of Liberation in 1948. Mm -hmm. In 1967, Jerusalem was reunified and it is under Israeli control, it is the capital of the State of Israel. Uh, but the Temple Mount, in addition to its importance for Jews and Christians, is the third in its holiness for Islam. Uh, it is believed to be the final destination of the miraculous night journey of Prophet Muhammad from uh, Arabia to the Far Mosque. And Far Mosque, Al-Aqsa, the Far One, is identified with the Temple Mount. Uh, all that, of course, stems from the fact that in the armies of Prophet Muhammad entering that place with uh, uh, the second caliph, uh, Omar, short time after the Prophet's death, in his army there were some uh, Jewish soldiers and they told him the significance of the Temple Mount. In any case, uh, the uh, Islamic concept is that that is uh, Temple Mount is the uh, Far Mosque. Uh, the name Jerusalem is not mentioned in the Quran. Mm. Uh, this is a later identification. In any case, uh, from there, uh, Prophet Muhammad is supposed to uh, ascend, ascend to heaven. The uh, story is thus that Jerusalem and Temple Mount became the third after Mecca and Medina in their importance for Islam. As a result of that, it became a very uh, sensitive political issue. Uh, uh, Jews claim it to be their only holy place. Uh, the Muslims claim it is holy for them. Uh, each of them uh, says, all of it is mine. Uh, though Israelis give the right to the Muslims, uh, the Muslims do not want to give any uh, right to the uh, Jews. No right of prayer, no right of entry, no right of uh, owning any part of it. Uh, the political situation became uh, complex and uh, one of the American presidents, Bill Jefferson Clinton, very naively thought that he is going to solve all the problems of the world. Uh, somebody whispered into his ear that uh, the Temple Mount is the crux of the Near Eastern conflict. And if he solves the Temple Mount problem, the rest of it would be a piece of cake. <laughs> so uh, he came up with a think tank that offered for the future to come with an, in an agreement of the parties to have a, uh, a division of sovereignty upon the Temple Mount. Whatever is above ground, thus including the uh, mosques of the Muslims, will be under Palestinian sovereignty and whatever is underground, thus including uh, the remnants of the temples of the Jews, that would be under Israeli sovereignty. It's an ingenious idea, but in Washington. <laughs> if you come down to earth, 
You can't have a building standing in one country and the plumbing in another country. You can't have sovereignty over the subground when all the approaches to the subground are from above ground. It's a super idiotic idea. Yeah. In any case, the, uh, the idea leaked out as everything in Washington. And uh, the result was that uh, in the 1990s, the Islamic Waqf, the religious trust which runs day-to-day -day matters upon the Temple Mount, began like mad to uh, uh, dig into the subground in order to jeopardize that plan. One of the results was very tragic, that is a large pit excavated, and from that pit they removed approximately 400 truckloads of soil saturated with uh, ancient remains. And uh, for the last uh, 12 years I'm directing the project of sifting through that uh, soil. Uh, in that soil we had until now uh, approximately half a million finds wow. covering thousands of years of history. Uh, very significant finds, some of which even changed history as we know it, as it is written in history books. Well, I want to talk about those in a moment, but uh, one of the things that you said to me earlier, which uh, many people share uh, this um, opinion, is that it's felt that uh, the Temple Mount is the most important piece of land, this little piece of, of land in, in, uh, within the old city walls. Uh, and it's also uh, politically you know, where many people feel like is, uh, you know, might be the basis for the start of a, of a large war. Listen, I'm an archaeologist. Uh, I deal with the past, not with the future. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know anything about the future, but uh, as for the present, I can say that it is a vulnerable point. It is an explosive place and it is uh, very sensitive. The Temple Mount uh, caused uh, lots of riots even recently. Even uh, several months ago we have had a uh, a wave of uh, violence which started uh, from events of the Temple Mount. So uh, the place is a most, most explosive. Yeah. So Temple I... Mount, by the way, occupies about one sixth of the total area of the old city. Temple Mount is the largest religious compound of the ancient world. So you've been able to at least uh, sift through dirt, and like you said, it's almost like it makes me want to cringe when I hear about things being bulldozed and, and just kind of a big excavation done without any regard for what might be in there. That was excavated uh, barbarically, without any archaeological supervision. Uh, it is the most delicate uh, place in the archaeology of Jerusalem. If one can squeeze out some something positive from that tragedy is uh, to sift through that soil. And this is what we do. I do it as a result of uh, the urging of two of uh, my former students who uh, found out some people who followed the trucks removing the earth from the Temple Mount. And uh, so uh, they urged me to take upon my shoulders this uh, project. We carry it out with the help of uh, volunteers coming from all over the world, coming from all facets of uh, society in Israel, and altogether we had uh, over a quarter of a million volunteers, which makes this project to be the most uh, exposed archaeological project in the world. So what kinds of things have you found you know, through this project? As this material is very badly mixed up with the bulldozers, as it is film material initially, uh, we have only small finds. Uh, more than that, the larger pieces, uh, larger architectural members, uh, pillars, capitals, sculptures, stones, building stones, they were kept upon the Temple Mount by the Islamic Trust in order to be reused once and again. The uh, small finds that we have are uh, pottery, 
we have large amounts. Pottery is datable, and as a result of that, one can draw a uh, kind of a graph of the uh, intensity of uh, activity upon the Temple Mount in different periods. We have over 6,000 ancient coins. We have fragments of uh, figurines and statuettes. Uh, we have uh, objects of ancient warfare, that is arrowheads, uh, slingshots, etc. Uh, we have uh, pieces of jewelry. Uh, we have seals, seal impressions, all kinds of clothing accessories, buckles, etc. All kinds of uh, objects. But we have also fragments of uh, building material, that is roof tiles, fo floor tiles. From the floor tiles of Second Temple period, from the time of Herod the Great, uh, we were able to reconstruct the uh, uh, very lavishly uh, decorated, colorful floors of uh, some parts of the Temple Mount. Uh, which were made of uh, imported stones, colorful stones, coming from North Africa, from Europe, uh, from Egypt, from Asia Minor, imported. And uh, we were able to reconstruct the patterns, which are very beautiful geometric patterns. I guess that the uh, coins uh, rolling on the floor from Jesus turning up the tab tables of the uh, money changes were rolling upon these floors yeah. because it is uh, only a few decades after uh, those floors were laid down. So we have the floor patterns, we, we, have, uh, we have objects uh, from all periods, mainly from uh, the time of David and Solomon some 3,000 years ago up till our own time. That's it for this particular interview. Thanks for joining me. Really excited to take this ongoing journey with you as we keep bringing more content. If you haven't already, you really should subscribe to this channel. There's a lot of phenomenal content coming down the road into the future that you'll want to know about. Leave a comment down here. I think people would love to hear from you and then you can hear from them too. If you liked it, go ahead and give a like. It only takes half a second and share this with people that you care about. The world needs more light in it right now. So thanks for being with me. Hope to connect with you again soon. Thank you.